Greetings, everyone. Uh, I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to do a, an experiment, okay? Uh, in the colonial period and even into the, to the uh, you know, the revolutionary period and, and the early republic, uh, a lot of the black powder used in America was made in Europe. And, um, uh, you know, depending on the situation, that, that could have been a problem, a, a logistical problem. Uh, and for guys living on the frontier, sometimes they had to make their own powder or, or get powder uh, where they could. Uh, this was also a problem when it came to, to Indian wars, when Indians uh, decided to fight against European powers. Uh, they really had to create alliances with other European powers because once they you know, switched to muskets, they, they really needed gunpowder uh, and, and they couldn't really make it themselves. Um, and so powder was a, was a commodity, all right? It was, it was a necessity, uh, but it was a commodity. It was hard to come by, and, um, you know, people had to do what they had to do to, to get a hold of it. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to shoot a couple different types of powder uh, in my Lyman Great Plains rifle, and I'm going to use a chronograph to basically measure the, the muzzle velocity of the bullet and uh, I also got a target down there about 40 yards and I'm gonna see if it makes a difference in uh, the, point of, the point of impact. Um, now, obviously back in the, in the old days, uh, the, you know, nobody would have cared about how fast, you know, chronographs obviously weren't a thing. And as long as they hit the target, that was really all that mattered. However, uh, marksmanship was uh, considered, uh, you know, important back in the day, not just for getting food or for, uh, you know, fighting battles or anything like that. Uh, but in the frontier, they used to have a lot of marksmanship contests and, um, uh, you know, it was, it was attributed to manliness, you know, marksmanship was important. And so if, you know, the type of powder you had access to did affect, um, you know, marksmanship, it, it could have been more serious than we think. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to compare some 2F powder with some 3F powder in this rifle and see if it really makes a difference. Now, I know a lot of you guys are, are black powder enthusiasts. You know, I can tell that from the, the comments that I get. And you know all about all this stuff, okay? But for people that might not know, uh, today commercially made black powder comes in different, uh, you know, grains or different uh, uh, coarseness, right? So... Um, this right here, this is 4F, all right? This is made by a company called GoX. Uh, 4F powder is really only used for priming flintlocks, all right? Flintlock rifles, flintlock muskets. And what I mean by priming is you have to pour a little bit of powder into a pan uh, and it lights very quickly from the spark created by the, by the flint hitting the, the steel frizzing. Uh, and that's actually what, what ignites the powder in the gun and sets the gun off, right? Uh, you wouldn't never load a rifle with 4F powder, all right? So we're not going to use this today because we're using a percussion rifle, so we don't even need this, all right? But that's 4F powder. All right, the next one here, all right, this is 3F powder. Uh, this is made by a company called Schutzen, but you can, you know, obviously GoX and other companies make uh, 3F powder as, uh, as well. Uh, this is a little more coarse than the 4F. Uh, this is primarily what I shoot. Um, some people would tell you that, uh, you know, for pistols and smaller caliber, caliber rifles, so like 40 caliber rifles, 36 caliber rifles, 45 caliber rifles, even 50 caliber rifles, uh, it's okay to use 3F. Um, I use 3F in everything, and here's why I primarily use 3F, all right? Uh, the smaller the, you know, the grains of powder, the, the, the less coarse the powder is, right? Uh, the faster it burns. So that 4F burns really fast, and that's why we use it as a primer. Uh, with this 3F, I can use it to uh, load my gun. I can use it as the propellant, the main charge, and I can use it as the primer um, in my flintlock. So a lot of times uh, with a flintlock, I will use this to both uh, load, the, load the rifle and prime the rifle. 
uh, and it works pretty good. Um, now, I also use 3F in my 62 caliber smoothbore, my Indian trade musket. And there's a lot of people who would say, hey, don't do that. That's too dangerous. That's too much pressure. Um, and, you know, I'm not, nothing I ever say on this channel is to tell you how to load your stuff. So, so don't take any of this as advice. Uh, I'll just say that I've used 3F almost always in my musket and I've never had a, had a problem with it. Uh, now I'm not loading very, you know, I probably never go over 80 grains, um, of 3F, but, but I have used 3F in my 62 caliber and I've never had a, had an issue with that. All right. Now this is 2F powder. Uh, this is go made by go X, but again, you can get 2F made by shoot center or whoever. Uh, and a lot of people would say, you know, use this for 50 caliber and bigger. Um, this is not actually my powder. I did not buy this. I borrowed this from somebody for, for this experiment today. Uh, but 2F's kind of, you know, for a long time was the most popular, I guess, uh, because everybody was shooting 50 caliber, um, you know, muzzle loaders or 54 caliber muzzle loaders. Those are kind of, you know, two most popular. Uh, but, you know, people started buying those cap and ball revolvers. They started getting into more historical rifles and shooting things like 36 caliber rifles, 45 caliber rifles. Then of course, you know, 3F becomes pretty popular again. All right, but what we're gonna test today is we're gonna test the 2F against the 3F. All right, now I'm going to basically fire three shots with each. So I'll fire three bullets with the 3F and I'll do three bullets with the 2F. Uh, I have already fired a shot in this rifle, sort of a fouling shot. And I will, um, between each shot, I will swab the barrel with a wet patch and a dry patch so it's going to be a shot wet patch dry patch shot wet patch dry patch shot so on and so forth okay and we'll do three of each uh, i'll give you the speeds for each and then i'll give you uh, at the end we'll look at the target and see what the target looks like all right so we're using the 3f powder here now i will tell you uh, we're going to use 70 grains for every shot in this experiment right so uh, with the 2F, we'll use 70 grains. With the 3F, we'll use 70 grains. All right, now since the 3F is a finer, you know, coarseness, it's, it's less coarse, uh, that means there's actually more powder uh, in there. So uh, it's 70 grains of volume, but there's going to be more granules in the charge. All right. Um, so again, it, it'll be different. It shouldn't be the same. So we'll, we'll do the 3F and then we'll do the 2F. So again, this is the 3F. All right. All right. That was 1,597.8 feet per second. Almost 1,600 feet per second. All right. Let me load it back up. All right, we have uh, ran a wet patch down the barrel. We ran a dry patch. Uh, we've loaded it back up with 70 grains of 3F. All right, we're gonna take our second shot. Let's see what happens. All right, that shot was uh, 1543, 1,543 feet per second, which is surprisingly very uh, consistent. I've seen, you know, modern cartridges uh, have a bigger, you know, deviation than that. So uh, let's load it up one more time with 3F uh, and see what happens. All right, here's our third and final shot with the 3F. All right, that shot was 1,577. So our average for the three 3F shots 
is 1,572 feet per second, 1,572 feet per second. Let's go check out the target. All right, so here's the 3F target. Uh, measures just over three inches, and uh, that's not great. Uh, but obviously, this would be a dead deer or, you know, a combatant. But um, I, I've definitely shot tighter groups uh, before. All right, we swabbed the barrel. We've got a new target up. We got the chronograph reset. Uh, this time, we're shooting. 70 grains of go x 2f powder all right let's see what happens all right uh chronograph reads 1474 so that's about a hundred feet per second less than we were getting with the 3f all right, uh, let's load it up. Try it again. All right, got the barrel swabbed. We're ready for our second shot of uh, 2F, 70 grains of 2F. Uh, let me say this real quick, just in case some of y'all are wondering. Uh, I got this, this rifle set up on these bags and you can see that I'm kinda, normally if I was shooting on bags, I would have my arm back like this. Uh, and so it looks like I'm doing it wrong or doing it weird, something like that, and I am. Uh, I'm not shooting at my normal uh, range. I, I, I've kinda got, I can see my range, but I've actually moved this target over a little bit and it's, I, I can't really get a good, uh, I, I don't typically shoot at this distance either. I shoot longer. Um, so it's, it's an awkward setup and I, my, my setup's all wrong. Uh, so I'm having to kind of hold the gun in place, but I'm still trying to keep it as steady as possible so we can get a, an accurate reading on these, on these groups. So uh, if you see me with my hand up here, I'm actually elevating the rifle just a little bit so I can get it on target. Uh, but here we go. Second shot of 2F. Uh, let's see. All right, according to the chronograph, that bullet was uh, left the muzzle at 1477 so 1477 feet per second all right let's shoot one more all right last shot of two if That shot, we got 1513, 1513 feet per second. All right, let's go check out that target. Here is the 2F target, and it's a much tighter group. It measures just under two inches. So uh, I did shoot better with the 2F. Now, does that mean it's a better load, or did I just shoot better, um, you know, the last couple of shots compared to the first couple of shots? Uh, yeah, it's hard to say, but uh, definitely shot better with the 2F today. You know, I figured since I was down here anyway, I'm going to shoot at that 100-yard target just to see if I can hit it. <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> At first I thought I missed, it took the bullet so long to get down there, but then I heard the steel ring. Man, this is fun. All right guys, so what did we learn? Um, 
Does the powder make a difference? Well, uh, it does, okay? It does make a difference. However, at the distances these guys were shooting back in the uh, you know early America, I don't think it made enough difference to matter. I think whatever powder they could get their hands on, uh, they would have done just fine. Uh, yeah, we, we shot a little faster with the 3F, we shot a little more accurately with the 2F, uh, but uh, you know, all of it would have got the job done. So uh, does this, is this really help me uh, as a historian? Probably not, but it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, if you guys like this kind of stuff, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.